Yes. Yeah. Hey everyone. Uh, so today uh, I'm going uh, to talk uh, about. Uh, sorry, share screen. Uh, today uh, I'm going uh, to talk about uh, building applications uh, with Angular and uh, ISP.NET Core. Uh, so uh, today I will guide you how to create uh, web applications uh, by using uh, an Angular on the front end uh, that connects uh, to an ISP.NET Core uh, on back end. Uh, this talk will be like uh, some brief guide uh, for developers uh, who want to start how to create web applications or getting new knowledge about using a combination of ISP.NET Core 2.1 and Angular 6. So I'm going to do this in English because it's just a lot smoother that way for such a global .NET conference. But if you want to ask me any questions in Russian uh, because I'm from Russia, Ребята, всем привет. Uh, so feel free to ask and I will be happy to discuss your questions. So, uh, all right, let's get started. Uh, so this is uh, agenda for today's talk. Uh, we will start uh, with checking out the prerequisites, uh, tools and requirements for preparing uh, of the environment. Uh, moreover, you will learn how to create web applications with and without uh, using .NET Core single page application templates in Visual Studio 2017. And uh, we will also look uh, at the way how you can do the same uh, by .NET CLI command. First, we will look at uh, my demo project uh, and we will, we will analyze a structure of solution and what I have chosen to develop it. And the base of the session, we will talk uh, in a bit about uh, upgrading an Angular at the sixth version. Okay. So uh, I want to pay your attention in a few moments about uh, prerequisites. Uh, so if you have already built uh, Angular applications, it's great uh, because we will talk today about Angular 6 and it will be nice to know basics of Angular 2 or higher. Uh, the next moment, uh, it is knowledge about building uh, apps uh, using ASP.NET Core 2. It preferably, it applies to building APIs. Uh, and in addition, I want to mention about IDE, uh, which you can use uh, to build such applications. Uh, so Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2017 supports both of them uh, from version 15.3 and higher. Uh, also. You can use Visual Studio for Mac, which fully supports as well. You can also develop your application using Visual Studio Code or JetBrains Rider and etc. I will use Visual Studio 2017 uh, to write backends and Visual Studio Code for front-end part. That doesn't that mean uh, that you should use the same, so feel free to use whichever you prefer. That's it. Okay. Now, uh, let's prepare our environment. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm using Visual Studio 2017 to write backend. Uh, so we should install uh, spend.net core 2. In case if you haven't it, you should go to Microsoft, Microsoft official website and download and install it. So uh, to write TypeScript code, I will use Visual Studio code. Everything of that uh, I already have on my machine. So. Also, uh, firstly, we need to make sure that we have installed Node.js 8 plus version and npm package manager on our machine to run our Angular application. You can download this uh, all package from uh, official websites as well. And the next phase is install an Angular CLI, which allows to create a new application, generate components, road services, and so on. So uh, you can also debug your application using ng-surf command. Uh, well, uh, to install Angular application on global level, you just need to type uh, uh, commands, uh, npm command uh, like that. Uh, npm install global level Angular CLI. That's it. So that allows to use uh, CLI commands anywhere on our machine. Uh, by the way, 
Uh, there is a visual representation of Angular CLI, which is named as An Angular Console. It means that we can do everything that Angular CLI can do. You can create projects, interact with your editor, run generators, commands, install extensions without ever touching uh, the terminal. Uh, you can even run every Angular CLI command via Angular Console, uh, and th that without remembering all the flags, paths, names, and etc. So you can download an Angular Console from an uh, official website. Uh, so it is angularconsole.com. Uh, and uh, you should only choose a more suitable version of your operation type, operation system to download Mac, Windows, Linux, and uh, the pretty straightforward uh, steps to install. So that's it. Okay. Now, uh, let's look how to create uh, an Angular application uh, with and without uh, using the .NET Core single page application templates using Visual Studio 2017. Uh, there is a more one way to create an Angular application uh, with .NET Core. Uh, so let's start uh, to talk uh, about uh, the first approach. Uh, here is a create an .NET Core application uh, API project where we will not use an Angular template because it will be uh, on the next step with adding an Angular 6 application to an API project uh, using Angular console. So uh, on the slide you can see that uh, there are uh, two tabs with uh, complete .NET Core API project without client app and the next step it is creating an Angular client application using Angular console. So uh, now we should the first it, it is create a .NET Core API project. Let me switch to Visual Studio. Um, okay. Here we go. So uh, we should create new project. So you should select uh, .NET Core, Aspenet Core Web Application, uh, put some name for your application, and uh, press OK. So uh, in the next window, uh, you should select uh, in our approach an API uh, empty template for creating an Aspenet Core application. Okay. So uh, now we need to create a client application, uh, and there are two ways how you can how we can do that. Uh, we can add uh, our Angular application uh, to our project uh, for Angular CLI. Uh, to create an Angular six based app, you should to navigate to our uh, aspenet.net core project folder, uh, where uh, we have our CS project file is present and uh, run uh, the command which is creating a uh, new client application for us. So uh, let me show you. Okay, so uh, you should type engine new client tab. So uh, this command will create uh, an Angular 6 application with, within our NPI project. But if you want, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, do not remember all this, all these CLI uh, commands and you prefer graphical user interface, uh, then you should uh, to test a new tool, uh, Angular Console. So if you have installed Angular Console on your machine, then you can create an uh, Angular application using that. So let's try it. I'm going to create uh, an Angular application using con Angular console. So uh, I have already installed this. Uh, you can either create uh, a new Angular application or you can import your an existing application which is crea created before. So uh, creating a new application is pretty straightforward uh, and all you need, uh, it is um, select path of your uh, project, provide workspace name, uh, it's uh, let it be users uh, source 
repos and our web application 10. Okay, and now we should provide a client of name for our workspace and we should choose the schematics. Okay, uh, good. Uh, but you can ask me uh, what is Angular Workspace. Now, in Angular Workspace, it is a directory which is generated via Angular CLI commands and enabled to contain uh, multiple projects, libraries uh, that derive the configuration. Uh, schematics, uh, it is a workflow tool. Uh, it is a part of Angular Dev Kit, which lets us uh, transform, generate, or update your project uh, and development uh, within our development workflow. Angular, uh, Angular CLI uses uh, schematics under the hood uh, in order to perform some job uh, jobs uh, inside. And the schematics provide uh, an ability to configure uh, the options of schematics and packages in the root level of our workspace. So uh, now uh, I should only uh, hit on the create button. And uh, you will find that uh, Angular console running the Angular CI client command for you, uh, for you uh, to create the workspace uh, and scaffolding your application. Angular CLI has an integrated terminal window. So when you compose and execute uh, your comments visually, uh, you will see all your change reflected in the inline terminal output in real time. Create an application takes approximately four or five minutes uh, of your time. I won't do, the, do uh, that right now because I already have my uh, client application uh, Angular workspace for uh, today talk, uh, which has been created uh, by me before. Uh, so uh, let me show how you can also uh, build, uh, serve, and test your application. So I have client application for my .NET Conf test application. Now. I will select you, and I have here uh, for options, serve, test, build, and generate component. So let's uh, build our client application. Uh, so uh, here uh, you can see uh, that we can choose uh, some important fields. Uh, it prompt um, when uh, you can uh, choose ahead of time application compilation option or watch option. You can select also the build uh, configuration. It can be default or production. Uh, based on your selected uh, options, uh, the comment will change uh, accordingly. So I'm, I selected all of these options. And uh, now let's run. OK. So uh, now uh, Ang our Angular application is uh, building, and uh, we should uh, to wait some seconds, I hope. <laughs> and uh, also, you can see that uh, here we have, uh, as I mentioned before, inline uh, terminal, where we can see all uh, building uh, history, which is uh, running in real time. So building in progress. All five modules. More and more and more. Okay, good. Now, uh, once the build successfully, uh, you can also uh, run the application. Now, uh, you can uh, can serve your application. Uh, and uh, I'm clicking on run. And now, uh, I have access to the uh, Angular Live uh, development server uh, by the next URL, localhost. So let me go to the next URL.
So our application is uh, complete and ready to test. So uh, also the next important thing uh, that is you can also run unit tests. Um, it is really important uh, and uh, you can uh, check all your uh, client tests uh, from Angular console as well. Uh, in result, uh, Angular console uh, will run uh, a browser uh, where we are able to see uh, all your test results and to see uh, what's, what uh, test passed or failed. So, uh, as you see, uh, we have one failed test because uh, it's expected uh, equal to welcome to the .NET conference, but it should contain welcome to client hub. So, test is working. Okay. But uh, if you remember, uh, our task uh, is to run our Angular application with .NET Core. So for this, we need add some code uh, within startup class, and uh, we should to switch uh, on Visual Studio 2017. Um, uh, so uh, the spot template uh, uses Angular application uh, and uh, uh, on uh, and Angular uh, client side uh, and uh, spanner.net core and backend. So it uses package uh, Microsoft Esplanade Net Core Spa services as a middleware uh, to provide uh, different configurable uh, options for your application, such as uh, hot model replacement, the routing helper, and so on. So uh, let's find out how to implement uh, Esplanade.NET Core Spa template features in the same app. So to do that, we should uh, register uh, Spa services that can provide static files. So uh, let me switch on my uh, .NET Conf test application because I already have uh, here a client app which was created by me uh, by Angular Console. So uh, let me open Startup Plus. And uh, here I should uh, provide uh, adding a SPA static files files. Add services. Add it. Group of client up list. Okay, good. So here is a published resources uh, will be copied to the dist folder uh, inside the client up uh, folder. Next, we need to add a uh, spa middleware to the pipeline. Uh, we can do that uh, inside the configure method. And so the configure method uh, should contain uh, the next. I will copy the, uh, the required code fragments uh, from my snippets. Do not waste uh, my session time uh, by typing uh, all this code. So, uh, and uh, now we need also uh, to add script to package JSON, uh, which will start serving uh, your client's application. Now, let me switch on package JSON. And here you should uh, add script section. And type ng surf comment. Okay. Now, we should provide our script name uh, to uh, for, for .NET uh, CLI CLI server and uh, 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 thereby uh, by adding the next piece of code. Uh, so if uh, our environment is uh, in development, we should add spy and use Angular CLI server 
and uh, npm script run script start okay so uh, by the way we make sure that the property launch uh, url uh, is not present uh, in our uh, launch settings json file uh, because we should uh, run our client side application uh, and do not use a, a API uh, action method. So, should uh, delete it or comment as you want. So, uh, it is a required configuration uh, for uh, running Angular code with that match core. So, uh, now uh, we can uh, now we can test our application. Let me run uh, our application using uh, .NET CLI command. Restore is completed. Okay, and now we can run our application. So uh, now our application is listing on a local host uh, five. Uh, wow, five thousand. Uh, we have some problem in scripts, really. Oh, sorry. I have lost a most important part that the script is named start. Yes. Let a bit more time to wait. Okay, we are ready to check. Okay, so uh, our Angular application is uh, now running with the .NET Core. Awesome. So uh, let's extend uh, this application uh, and call the Values Control API from Angular application. To do that, you should open our app component, uh, and uh, I will use for that uh, already Visual Studio Code. And here. Let me uh, let me open now. Okay. Let me open now. This is Studio Code. Okay. First, we need add import uh, of uh, HTTP client uh, to our component. Uh, so uh, we should. HTTP client from uh, Angular. No, 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 no. From Angular common HTTP. So, uh, and then we should uh, add HTTP GET request uh, to our wireless controller in API. So, let me copy uh, of that. Do not waste our time. So here I have a string array uh, with values, and here I have HTTP GET uh, method to get values from our API. And uh, then I 
can uh, to set uh, this result to my various string array. Okay. Uh, also, next to is a uh, next step. It is import of our uh, HTTP client model uh, to our app model. HTTP and uh, add this model to import for our app model. So finally, uh, we should add uh, the some HTML to show all our values uh, on the page. So we have we will have uh, some HTML. Uh, it, uh, it should like uh, looks like uh, our values and. Uh, list of our values here. So uh, now we are ready to test. We can see that uh, our .NET clear command is rendering our uh, resources and uh, we can see our values on the screen. Okay, now we should, now we see all uh, these values uh, which return from API. Good. Now, um, so uh, this is the uh, next part. Uh, we uh, now created an application without a spa and angular application to play. So uh, now, uh, in the second approach, we will use this spa template and we should. Uh, create now a new project, but uh, we should only choose a, a Angular template on the next step here. So uh, in the result, Visual Studio will create a complete, well-structured application for you uh, without extra steps uh, like uh, we did uh, in the first approach. So you already uh, can 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 see that we have already client sub application uh, client sub folder in our application, uh, and also you can notice that uh, we haven't uh, some views folder, uh, and uh, it is no longer there because we don't need uh, that that views folder because we are using client sub uh, as client sub to play. So. That's it. We just created an Angular 6 application with that much core, pretty straightforward, no problems. Now, uh, let me uh, show you how to create uh, the same using uh, .NET CLI command. Uh, so, uh, we, we can uh, scaffold a new project using also .NET uh, new Angular command and uh, create and scaffold all your all or everything of that you need for your Angular application with that net score. Uh, all of you need it is um, type uh, your comments dot net you angular dot net conf app let it be x. So uh, we can see some processing of creating our project and uh, here you go, we have this already uh, complete application. Now uh, let me look in, uh, going to this folder with our application, .NET spawn appx and run this is the code. So, we see the same well-structured application with client up, with controllers. Uh, here, some uh, other name for controller, simple data controller, but uh, the same of the, from the structure and uh, other things. Everything is the same. It's really simple and easy to start and use uh, .NET CLI commands. Uh, now, uh, let me. 
switch on the next part of our demo. In this module, uh, I will guide you through uh, my build guide web application. Uh, in addition, I would recommend to you to get the source uh, code from my GitHub, which you can download or fork. Uh, so uh, here you can uh, also um, clone or know what you prefer. Uh, so uh, the latest uh, change already are present uh, on GitHub. So uh, this beer application provides uh, you information about beers uh, from the, around the world. It's using a third uh, party uh, beer DB API to get an S3 data. This application can be, has, has been created using Visual Studio.net Core single page application template based on Angular. Uh, if you are, uh, want to run this application locally on your machine, you should get first. Uh, you should first get a private key to access to Bravery DB API. Uh, but if you want to skip these steps uh, with registering a private key, you can open the public version of my application, which is hosting on Asia, and available by the uh, uh, by the this URL. So, uh, Beer Guide, AsiaWebsites.net. So, welcome to Beer Guide. Uh, I have published uh, my application to Asia Cloud using a Pay As You Go subscription. It is a preview, sub preview subscription which allows you to pay uh, only what you use. In fact, you can cancel uh, any subscription. Uh, you can edit and bring uh, error service to notify you when price has been changed. Uh, so it will help help you monitor and manage billing activity. It's really useful and flexible pricing plan. So uh, now uh, let me show uh, what we have uh, in my demo uh, in the sources. So let me open my application. Uh, I have created a solution uh, with a few layers, as you can see. Uh, as, we are, as we are working um, uh, on a layer architecture, uh, our project must be independent between all the layers. Uh, I can say that the controller layers uh, uh, and data access layers must be independent. If we make it tightly coupled, uh, any change related to the data access layer uh, can change the controller code. Uh, hence, the repository is used to create uh, an abstraction layer between the data access layer and business logic layer of an application. So implementing these patterns uh, can uh, help insulate your application from the change uh, in the data store and can facilitate automated unit testing uh, or test driving development methodology. So uh, now we will check uh, each of uh, these all layers uh, one by one in detail. So the first layer, it is Beer App Web Application Project. Uh, this layer is mainly used uh, to, request, uh, to handle requests from uh, which are coming from the client. Uh, the web layer mainly contains uh, the control controller classes. It is build controller client part uh, as we have been uh, created before uh, using Angular console. So uh, and uh, some uh, layout page uh, to share uh, my uh, HTML on page. So uh, build controller uh, is derived from MVC controller where we have some uh, several main actions. You can see that I have some uh, routings uh, which, uh, which are working for uh, various uh, query string, uh, uh, query, st query strings, and um, so now let's look on uh, startup class. Uh, all configuration uh, contains in startup class. As you know, uh, the startup class configures uh, services and the application request pipeline. Both the host uh, and app services are then available uh, 
uh, and configure and throw out uh, the application. The configure uh, services method is called by the web host before the configure method to configure the application services. Uh, so uh, now uh, let's look on our uh, Bravery DB settings. It is my uh, class to store and keep uh, my settings uh, to access to Bravery DB API. Uh, so well, when, you are, when you are working uh, with web applications, you can kind uh, of get hooked to uh, the ease of the dependency injection and some way to keep uh, settings in a JSON and access to the pro uh, DI. So uh, I'm here, I use the options uh, pattern, which uses uh, which uses classes uh, to represent groups of related things. When configuration settings uh, are isolated by scenario and uh, into separate classes, uh, the application adheres uh, to two important uh, software engineering principles. And an options class must be on a non-abstract uh, and uh, uh, with pu uh, public uh, parameters constructor. Uh, so the following class where DB settings uh, has two properties. Uh, API URL and API secret key. So secret key. Uh, as you see, uh, I injected uh, this settings class and uh, then added it uh, to scope uh, of my application uh, to get it everywhere where I will want. Uh, so uh, now uh, you can see uh, how I'm using these uh, settings. Uh, so it's my beer service where I'm trying uh, to get access to Bravery DB API. And here I have injected my Bravery DB settings via construction. And now I can uh, act, can get access uh, to the settings uh, anywhere. And I'm using here uh, to get access to API secret key. Okay. Now uh, let's talk a bit about uh, HTTP client. Uh, HTTP client got uh, a whole new implementation based on uh, .NET sockets and a spawn, uh, generic spawn class. Uh, it also got a new factory, uh, a new factory uh, which is uh, a new factory class which is as seeds uh, in creating uh, perfect pre-configured instances uh, that plays and. Um, nicely with dependency injection. Uh, so I'm using here uh, Bravery DB client, which is uh, HTTP type client. And uh, you can desire a pre-configuration for your HTTP client inside a custom class, as I uh, have used here uh, in my case. So if this Bravery DB client has uh, HTTP client uh, public property, a read-only property, so and injected HTTP client uh, in via construction. Uh, so this custom class can be registered as typed client, and uh, uh, later when we need it, uh, this class it can be injected via uh, the calling class constructor. Uh, let me switch on the service, and here you can also see that I have injected Bravery DB client uh, via constructor for beer service. Uh, so. I prefer type client uh, for following the reasons. Uh, the first, it is a flexible approach compared to named clients. Uh, you can no longer uh, have to deal with strings like in named clients, uh, and you can encapsulate the HTTP calls uh, and all, all logic dealing with that endpoint. So uh, now, the second layer, it is build up business logic layer. Here you can see um, just a pair of interface and its implementation, beer manager and iBeer manager. It just contains uh, some logic uh, which uh, allow me uh, to manage my uh, application behavior, which is which it, it is working, uh, uh, it, which depends on uh, client requests uh, and uh, during some filtering, sorting, uh, searching and so on. Uh, well, uh, also as you can you see, I have some entities. All entities uh, were extracted to the separate beer up entities project. So here I have all these uh, models and uh, it is also uh, is 
is good to have all your models in the Super H project. Uh, now, peer app services, which is uh, I have already uh, talked about about it, uh, uh, is using to communicate uh, with our Bravery DB API. Bear uh, servers uh, is the main implementation of this layer uh, with our interface. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using query helpers. Uh, let's talk about in a, in a bit about uh, query helpers. Uh, you uh, maybe noticed that uh, creating a query string in code uh, can lead to errors as you have uh, to deal with strings, uh, ampersand and question marks and so on. Fortunately, ispanet.net core has a static class uh, query helpers, which is uh, uh, has a function uh, uh, at query string offers a neat way uh, to build your query string and ispanet.net core. So the add query string has uh, two parameters. It is uh, one of for creating query string for a single parameter, uh, and another for multiple your parameters. You don't have deal to uh, with ampersand and question marks uh, while you are uh, composing your uh, query, uh, specifically uh, for uh, some queries where we have a lot of parameters. So, and uh, yes, of course, we have beer up below tests project where we have all our unit tests uh, to cover our logic. So, okay, good. Now, uh, let me switch on uh, my client side uh, of my project and um, I want to uh, to show uh, a bit uh, in a bit about uh, client side part. So uh, uh, let's look at what we have uh, in client application, uh, which has been updated by me to the six uh, version. Uh, it is uh, six point zero point nine version, which is using uh, now in my for my application. Uh, the sixth version of Angular CLI has been published uh, with a lot of improvements. And change. So I will try to discuss a few uh, of them. So architecture uh, of uh, initialized Angular CLI project uh, has been changed, and uh, mostly on the under the hood. And since uh, the releasing of Angular uh, 6 version release candidate 2. Uh, so uh, the first thing it is uh, Angular JSON file. Uh, so. Uh, you can see, uh, you can notice uh, that uh, Angular JSON uh, most likely that all in, and we have encountered the Angular Clip JSON file generating a project using Angular CLI. It is well known uh, that this file is used as for configuration schema for the whole project and manipulated by the CLI, including managing of different improvements, environments, testing, proxy, uh, third-party resources, and so on. Also, uh, as you might uh, have noticed, uh, the old configuration file Angular Cli JSON was replaced by new one. So, uh, and now uh, we have Angular JSON file uh, with some change inside, and uh, the whole configuration now is uh, contains in this file. Now, let me switch on beer series. Uh, I want to pay your attention uh, on a new recommended way how to register is a uh, how to register a provider directly inside uh, your services. Uh, so in the injectable provider, using now a new provider in attribute, uh, it accepts to root uh, as a value uh, or any model of your application. So and when you use a root, uh, your in injectable. Uh, your injectable service will be registered at a, as a single tone uh, in the application, and you don't need uh, to add it to providers uh, for the root model. Similarly, if you use providing in, a, for example, users model, the injectable is, is registered uh, as a provider of the users model without adding it to providers of this model. And uh, the new way has. Um, been introduced uh, to have a better tree shaking uh, in the application. Currently, a service added it, uh, to the providers of a model will end up in the final bundle. 
and ever ever if it's not used uh, in the application, which is a bit sad. But uh, and the, if you use uh, lazy loading, you can fall in a bunch of traps or end up you know, with the service bundled in the wrong place. It shouldn't happen often in applications. Uh, if you write a service you, and you usually use it, but third-party models sometimes uh, offer uh, services that you don't use. Uh, and you end up with a big bundle of useless. So, uh, so it will be especially useful for library developers, uh, but it is but is now recommended a way to register an injectable uh, ever for application developers. So the new CLI will even scaffold uh, service with provider in root by default now. So when you are creating your application, uh, new your application, it will be uh, add by default. Now uh, let me show my beers component. Uh, Angular 6 uh, uses now uh, RxJS 6 version internally and requires uh, you to update uh, your application also. So and RxJS 6 has uh, has been changed as, uh, and uh, now uh, we have the way how to shoot import uh, some things. So RxJS on and higher version introduces two important uh, changes compared in the to RxJ, uh, RxJS of previous version. It is different internal structure and uh, uh, that requires you to change uh, your import statements. So you can see that I have uh, previously import uh, of map operator using this way. And now uh, using RSJS 6 version, I should uh, just uh, uh, type map uh, operat operator and uh, provide uh, also all you all uh, other operators of what I what I need, and uh, just uh, to type RSJS slash operators and that's it. So also uh, LG, uh, LGS uh, introduced the pipe opera operators and the pipe as a method uh, to change your operators uh, operators uh, and uh, uh, the old way of ch chaining already uh, them will not work and uh, additionally uh, some operators were renamed and uh, so pipes uh, takes in uh, your data uh, as an input and transforms uh, it to the direct output. So, and the X zero, yes. Yes, I'm wrapping up. Okay, so uh, let me show only my custom uh, order pipe which I uh, have been I have created uh, for my project. It is ordered by pipe and I have used this uh, pipe to order uh, my beers by alcohol content. So I can uh, sort by alphabetical or alcohol content. It is my order by pipe. Okay, so uh, now uh, let me switch back to my presentation. Uh, and uh, with the release uh, of uh, of uh, Angular, uh, we have uh, some uh, uh, latest. Uh, we have some way to get the latest uh, of this version by the um, some ways. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, in a bit about uh, upgrading your Angular application to the sixth version. So uh, let's get right to it. If you are looking to use Angular 6 application version, there are a few steps you will need to complete to get over there where we can take advantage of a new NG update tool. To update Angular application to the latest version, uh, you should switch to your client's application directory and run ng update all command. This will update the package JSON and then you need to run npm install. If you get a message about uh, some Angular CLI uh, should update it, you can update it by running uh, ng update Angular CLI. You may uh, now uh, see some uh, vulnerabilities on your in your npm uh, package, and to fix them, you should run command npm audit fix. 
You may have to run this uh, several times as some of the fixes introduce uh, new vulnerabilities. And uh, when, you uh, yeah, when you will run an, uh, your application and everything during update was okay, uh, then application will be running as before. So if you want to update, your Angular application from any version starts from 2 plus to later. You should go to uh, update uh, Angular, uh, Angular IO website. Uh, and here you can choose your version of Angular. And here is the final version uh, what you want to upgrade. So it's make, uh, making it easy for developers to stay up to date uh, with the latest releases and extremely important for, to us. So let us know what you think uh, uh, and what you can update your application. So, so thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope that you have found uh, some useful information from this session and I will be glad uh, to hear your questions uh, in the Twitter or right now. So, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, there, are, there are some uh, benefits uh, in this way to use uh, your uh, client application, uh, which is uh, uh, separately contains from your backend. It is a flexible way to, to keep your change and uh, uh, to keep your application is, uh, is in, in run in a more flexible way. Because uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, has uh, you can have a team uh, where you can uh, have uh, some backend developers and frontend developers, and uh, it is really a, uh, a flexible way to work uh, on your application uh, within your team. And uh, I have uh, such experience uh, where we can uh, to work uh, in the same application on frontend part and backend part. And it's really uh, good and uh, easy uh, to work uh, on both uh, sides of front end and back end. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye.